Welcome to the annual DEF CON convention. This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is video tape number 26. Viruses on and off the internet. You're starting to get a little close to each other. Uh, although the virus community, I think, lags quite a bit behind as far as how long they've been around and actually developing. If, uh, for those of you that don't know, in talking about information exchange and availability, back in 1992 when the hacking community was in well full swing for a long time, the uh, virus writing community was just kind of getting started with little fighter net bulletin board systems and virus writer networks. But people were doing a really good job of learning new things, but the availability of information just wasn't so widespread as it was in the hacking community because the virus writers weren't yet for the most part on the internet, although some are starting to be. We've got people here representing a wide range of positions, and I'm going to read a little bit what other people have said about these positions before asking each panelist to, to make, answer some questions. I know what I'm going to let you do is ask questions of all these people, and then they maybe will ask questions of you. And the goal is kind of to get a perspective of what everybody thinks about the issues and look at the different perspectives and get away from a lot of the stereotypes that we have in these kind of discussions. So with that, I'm going to Introduce the first person. Um, I got a, an email message that I'm using with permission from a former editor of a magazine dealing with viruses. Now wait a minute, this is wrong. That's the second guy. Here's the first guy. We all know that only scum release viruses on the internet. Only scum would write a virus and, and put it out there infecting people. So with that, I'll introduce my my scummy guest here, the attitude adjuster. Could you all clap for him? Because he's a good guy. Thank you. Thank you. And he's going to be taking a position that uh, people need to have their attitudes adjusted, and he's just the guy to do it. My next guest here is representing um, the point, sort of, that the bug track and NT bug track people would generally seem to take. I don't know how close it will be because they're not actually here to represent themselves. Has anybody seen Alfred? <laughs> no, well, he's, he said he would be here, but I guess he couldn't make it. He's still sleeping. Maybe he's still sleeping. Um, well, what was said about, about this particular position is that we know what happens when people of inferior ethics or inferior integrity are allowed to, to moderate mailing lists. These bug track and NT bug track guys are no better than cyber terrorists who will stop at nothing to accomplish their goals. Now, before you all go, huh, I didn't say this. This was said by somebody else, not me. But this fellow, Richard, is here to represent the position of the bug track and NT bug track moderators, which he's somewhat familiar with, having read lots of emails that they've sent, working with us in a project to start having communications between antivirus community and general security community. Uh, the next position that will be represented. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, clap for him too. He's all right. He's really sweet. I like him. Uh, the next position here is uh, what's been said about this position is that these closed-minded antivirus product developers want to keep all of the cool information for themselves. They do not want the world, the community, the users at large to get information about viruses. They want to control the information. Only they can save you. And here representing the antivirus community is my colleague, <laughs> Toro, who works for NAI, but is here representing himself. He is not here representing his company and what he will present is his own opinion and should not be construed for that of any organization of any type, blah, 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 you know the deal. This is Torov. And finally, we have the position on the end which was said that these guys all should be in jail. This sort of thing is illegal and immoral, and anybody who does it should be put in jail. We should make a martyr out of some of these virus writers and distributors, and then see how far they'll go to protect this kind of precious information. So representing the position that all the virus writers who've ever written a virus or even thought about writing a virus should be put in jail, stopped from replicating, disconnected from all communicators and com computers, is John. Let's hear it for John. Come on, John series. Again, this is, may or may not be his real position, and they can disclose or not uh, exactly what their real positions are. And if you haven't noticed, I don't have a real position. I just like to hear what everybody says and just think about it. And so if any of you have questions about any of this afterwards or, and don't get a chance to ask questions, please come talk to me. We're writing a paper on this topic of the two colliding worlds for virus bulletin conference it will be in Vancouver. So I'm really interested to discuss with anybody. So the first question, hmm, 
Oh yeah, viruses are irresponsible, unethical, damaging, should be illegal no matter what. We should give law enforcement some real teeth to arrest these guys and put them in jail because they don't belong on the face of this earth. With that in mind, I'd like to ask, what do you think about the public availability of viruses and virus source code on BBSs and FTP sites? And I'd like to ask that each panelist will have two minutes to answer that question. And we'll start with my friend, Mr. Adjuster. <clears throat> okay. Uh, can I take this out of here? Hey, yeah, all right. Availability of viruses on public websites and FTP sites. Um, well, first of all, I, I really don't care if they give the law enforcement more teeth to to put us in jail or lock us up and throw away the key. Um, the the fundamental act of expression that I see in virus programming is something that, sure, they can make a law against it, but nobody's going to stop. Um, the people that they're going to stop are not the people that are the, the problem. Um, as far as the public availability, there's nothing out there that's publicly available that's really anything to be all that afraid of. Uh, the stuff that is out there to be afraid of is to be afraid of for a week until the NAI guys or whoever get their hands on it and, ooh, they update their signatures, they can scan for it. Well, you'll get your turn. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the range of ultra-high effectiveness in time is not necessarily very long. The AV guys get their hands on it, and your great new technique is useless. Um, regardless, though, um, the availability really doesn't bother me. I'd rather see the information out there. Um, I'd rather see the the guy that, hey, wants to learn a little bit more about viruses and how they work to get his hands on them. At the same time, I want the researchers to be able to get their hands on them, too. I uh, don't mind everybody seeing the techniques. Um, I don't think wanton destruction is necessarily all that bad. Um, and if the publicly available sites cause some people to do some wanton destruction, well, you know, whoever got their data destroyed, too bad. They didn't take good precautions. I uh, think... Thank you very much. That yeah. gets you too much. Oh, damn. Uh, now, we're <laughs> <laughs> now we'll go on to the next representation. I don't know if you want to represent a, a moderated male in this position here or your own position. So could you please kind of state what position you're, you're taking here? Well, I think uh, it, it's pretty close to my genuine position, which is that the availability of viruses is kind of a good thing and kind of a bad thing, which is very kind of lukewarm. I think the main thing with having these vast virus collections online is that they are such a waste of bandwidth. Every virus is pretty much a one-off of find first, find next, file open, append, close, you're done, find the next. There are actually very few viruses out there which seem to do anything new. The viruses which I did think had some, um, had some good points about being online were Melissa. That was kind of interesting to see what was going on. Concept, the first XL virus, which has temporarily slipped my mind. Mm -hmm. um, those things, because they were new, there was some interest in actually getting a hold of them and having people uh, being able to take a look at them. In particular for Melissa, for example, rather than wait around for any antivirus vendor to fix the problem for us, we simply went in and patched the mail server. Um, and ooh, suddenly Melissa wasn't really such a big deal. Um, certainly not in my organization. So I think there's a middle ground. It's just the sheer boredom factor. I don't see why any of you would want to go out and download another 10,000 viruses. I don't take two minutes, but that's really all I've got to say. It's boring. Okay, thank you. And now our antivirus expert. Could you please comment on the public availability of virus source code and virus executables on bulletin boards, FTP sites, and websites? Yeah, as you could guess, I'm against uh, the public availability of virus and virus source codes for several reasons. The main reason is I still have to find, well, say a good virus, say a virus that doesn't uh, destroy anything even, uh, involuntarily, and by making those viruses public available, uh, those people who are, well, act irresponsible, say kids, say people who uh, try to damage someone, are able to pull off a virus and play some tricks to their teacher, and maybe this gets out of band. Remember, a virus, when once unleashed, and it, if it works, most don't really work, it replicates uncontrollably. And uh, if a virus is online, put online or being distributed, well, it takes, in, it takes us only well, a quarter of an hour to add a detection 
and removal. And so until finally uh, the definition updates are distributed within the company, this could take up to one month because of company internal procedures of quality assurance. So by putting them online, you're threatening the larger companies uh, until they have the real protection in place. For a couple of viruses like, for example, Melissa, it was possible to patch a mail server, but it is easily, uh, it would be fairly easy to have a virus where this is not possible, and then releasing it or its full source code would be pretty irresponsible. Thank you very much. He's an AV guy, but you should just clap for him too. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, uh, fourth panelist, I understand that you believe anybody who even thinks about writing a virus should be put in jail for the rest of their lives. Starting with Fred. So if you could please present you know, your rationale and state whether or not this is really what you, or irrational as that may be, and state whether or not this is your real position or whether you're taking this position because you've heard people take it and you want to make sure people understand what's going on out there in conversations about disclosure and availability of information. Now, this, this is not my, my real position, however, I can argue it because there are, I can argue either end of the spectrum, and there, there are valid reasons for all of it. For example, here, as Richard said, his company was able to take online information and help themselves. At the same time, uh, the internet has become a vital part of our everyday life, business and personal. I won't say it's as important as the telephone, but it's damn close. Uh, viruses, all sorts of malicious code, undermine the reliability of the internet, and we are rapidly reaching a point where by none of us will be able to connect to it if we have anything to lose. People who abuse uh, the internet, who do things that harm others, must be stopped. Otherwise, the internet, within a year or two, will not be usable by any of us. The only way to do this is to keep them from doing it. You pass laws. If you find someone who does it, if you can get the laws to apply, which is a totally different problem with international laws, uh, you must make examples of these people. Everyone you catch, punish them severely. I say put them in jail, um, but I've got to qualify that by saying there can't be an internet hookup in the cell. We cannot let these people continue. They must be stopped. Thank you very much. John? I bet you guys never thought you'd be here clapping for somebody who's saying these people must be stopped, huh? This is, <laughs> what are, <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the posting of virus source code to mailing lists like BugTrack and NT BugTrack. I've been having some conversations with Alpha and, and Ms. Cooper about this. And I think that the, neither of the positions are really written in stone as far as what's the right thing to do, what really benefits the users, what do people really need. I have email from some members of the antivirus community. Hi, hey, you're here. Come on up. Alex won, you made it. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to go back to the last question because you want me to answer it. And so you probably fine. Totally fine. No, we want to know what you think about this because it all kind of ties in. We were discussing the public availability of viruses and virus source code, not to mailing lists like you, moderator and minister, but to virus bulletin boards, uh, FTP sites, worldwide websites. Could you give us about two minutes of your impressions of the public availability of viruses on websites, FTP sites? My impression um, that is always going to happen, regardless of our opinion. So, you know, trying to say it's right or wrong is definitely not going to change anything that it's done. Uh, so you might as well uh, accept that fact and prepare for it. So you might as well accept that fact and, you know, just deal with it. Uh, it's going to be there. They're going to happen. People are going to uh, write viruses. They're going to publish them. Uh, they're going to trade them. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, that's pretty short and to the point. The next question, and you came just in time for it, is what do you think about the posting of computer viruses to the mailing list like bug track and anti bug track? And uh, we'll again have about two minutes. I've gotten some email from some antivirus developers who tell me that the supposed security experts do not have a clue about how the virus writers think or work or how to do this stuff, and they should leave it to us, the experts. They shouldn't post this. They should never allow the 
this kind of posting to happen. On the other hand, I have email from system administrators that tell me these sorts of posts are essential for them to do their job. They really need this information. They want this information. And by God, they're going to have this information. So if we could just take about two minutes each, and I think we'll start down here this time with your impression of the posting of via source code to moderated mailing lists like BugTrack and into BugTrack. I'm sorry, do I have to jail all of one on this one, or can I just talk in general? No, you have, you have, to, you have to be wherever you want to be. Oh, I have to imprison him. No. Okay. Okay. Put him in jail, that's all right. Just as a lot of system administrators may voluntarily and reasonably look to these moderated lists for sources of information, many, many, many uh, other types, script kiddies on down, uh, look to them for information. By, giving, by posting actual source code, you're not only making this information readily available, but since the list is supposed to be a good guy list, you're actually endorsing it. This is, ne next to distributing it as, as, as a free diskette in PC Mag, is about the worst thing you could do. And again, it must be stopped at all costs. Thank you. Could we have the impression of the antivirus developer? And could you comment on the common song aid of people who think that this information should be kept just for the antivirus community? Yeah, well, the main point is here, uh, virus source code has got nothing to do in those mailing lists. They haven't, well, they don't really hit the issue. Viruses uh, are not, well, bugs in an operating system to be exploited and to be fixed. Viruses use features of operating systems or uh, of programs. So there is nothing to fix by those lists. And um, as an administrator, if you would have to look at each of 500 viruses a month, uh, trying to fix down your system for yourself, you would end up uh, doing nothing else. Um, now I'm, I'm a little bit uh, uh, at a loss. Oh, yeah, and uh, one of the most important things about uh, publishing a source code, especially in such lists, if you then uh, use the source code to play around with, to compile it, uh, then you probably create a new variant of this virus. Because of the way antivirus software works, each slight modification adds in a new variant that may prevent the antivirus software from fixing that problem immediately. So uh, it is well, more or less dangerous to uh, let, especially in such a list with all the script kidding reading this, get those informations leak out as it doesn't really help anyone. If you want to help anyone, then it, the information, for example, for Melissa would be enough to filter for a certain X line in the message shadow. Very interesting. Thank you. Now, um, since our phone is here, you can go ahead and, and play the role of the, you, Richard, can go ahead, instead of playing the role of the moderator of mailing list, tell me what you think and tell the audience here what you think about the publication of the source code on the moderated mailing list. Does it help you as an administrator to do your job? Do you think it's useful or do you think it causes more harm than good? I actually think that the publication of code on mailing lists has a place, but a very limited place when it comes to viruses. For example, the publication of, and again we'll come back to Melissa because it's new, was kind of useful because it was all over the place and it was in the wild and gee, if you wanted a copy of Melissa, well, you know, you probably just check your mail at one point, it worked pretty well. Um, so when it's new and it's got something new to say, I actually don't have much of a problem with these things appearing on the list. The times that I do have a problem are when it's new, it's not spreading in the wild, so nobody's actually getting this, and it's just like, at that point, it's just a way of getting it out there. So I think it comes down to responsible disclosure, and um, I think that's really the way that those lists are at their best. When something's causing a real problem, we can actually get the information out there, but when something is kind of existing only in code form, wide banding it out there is just going to make life worse. Viruses work because people trust computer programs. They don't generally work because they're some super secret trickery. It's really, you know, if you don't download this thing and run it, you're probably in pretty good shape. There is no new exploit in viruses. It's the same old, same old, time and time again. That said, when there's some new interesting um, factor, then at that point, yes, I don't have any problem with uh, those things going out. But I hate to see bug track cluttered up with, you know, my thousand new PS MPC viruses, which I made today all on my own with my mum watching. That I wouldn't want to see. 
Thank you very much. Your position on the publication of virus source code on WebTrack, please. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. well, let's see. We have an opinion that publishing viruses uh, gives uh, code to hackers. Uh, Don, well, I guess the uh, posting of uh, exploits and vulnerabilities says the same, so how is that any different? Um, do not stick your head in the sand. It does not help and it does not work. Uh, then we have uh, admins who do not have the time to uh, examine viruses. Well, how come they have the time to examine uh, security exploits and vulnerabilities? It's only if they have the time, some of them do as part of their job. Uh, obviously, you can make the point that that's the security uh, vendor's job to you know, examine viruses and publish uh, security scanners and IDSs. But there's many uh, admins that well do that themselves, but at least uh, do it to the point where they have enough knowledge to make sure the stuff that the vendors are selling them are uh, not snake oil. And uh, so I agree. I mean, publishing uh, every day, you know, every single virus is not going to help at all. Uh, the idea that you mentioned that viruses exploit the same hole is completely correct most of the time. As a matter of fact, I mentioned this to Sarah over a private email. And the difference between the virus community and, uh, uh, as you call them, security experts, which, from my point of view, they're all the same, is that when an exploit gets published on BotTrack, most of the time it gets fixed from the vendor. You receive a patch. Whereas with the antivirus vendors, you have never seen a patch. You spend so many years, you know, uh, releasing scanners for viruses as they exploit the same vulnerability, and yet Microsoft or whomever does not fix the problem that you come to expect in a solution whatsoever. Um, I'd like to know, do you have a response to that? Since the, yeah. Yes, I think we have a response to that over here. So before we go on down here to Mr. Adjuster, uh, we're here to all here. Please. Uh, to, to respond directly on this, on this, I mentioned before there's a major difference between uh, an exploit being posted on a list like Backtrack because an administrator could use the, actually this exploit to then really check if the vendor has fixed it or not. And exploits exploit pro, um, vulnerabilities, buffer overflows don't know what in programs. Viruses don't exploit anything. They use bloody feature of the operating system or of uh, the uh, application they are running with. There is nothing to fix from that side. The only way to fix that would be to use another software. Yeah. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> okay, let's conduct a small poll here. Uh, how many of you use uh, Microsoft Word and Excel? I do. All right, how many of you has used that application uh, uh, macros in Microsoft and Excel? A couple. How many of you have used the feature to create a file from um, Visual Basic macros? So how many people do actually need that feature to be turned on by default all the time? Can they produce a patch from Microsoft uh, Visual Basic where that is turned up by default? And only unless you, you know, change your registry key, that feature is enabled? They could. They haven't. That's because you don't expect it. Yes, and, and finally, Attitude Adjuster, if we could hear your opinion on the publication of virus source codes to the moderated mailing list. Sure. What do you think about that? Sure. First of all, um, to the moderators of the mailing list, I, I got to feel sorry for the possible bullshit civil and, and um, criminal prosecution that could come in doing that because I fully support the publication of virus source code on full disclosure mailing lists. Um, I, I want to throw it out that I think every virus, not every, but most viruses do exploit one kind of operating system flaw, and that is a combination of user trust and user stupidity. Um, which is essentially the same. Yeah, which are essentially the same thing. Um, some viruses actually do exploit real holes in operating systems, though, and not to say those holes couldn't be exploited in and of themselves by an individual to you know, penetrate a host or whatever, but if a virus is using a penetration technique, it's just as valid if that virus is using an exploit as if it's just a standalone an exploit. And I can see the utility in posting that just for that utility. Um, I take kind of the opposite view of my colleague that's beside you, um, the AV, AV position, on the same thing. Um, I don't mind viruses that maybe have novel or hard to defeat techniques being posted to full disclosure mailing lists just because that causes them to replicate more. And hey, if they're harder to fix, it's going to be a longer time between the day that virus is released and the day that virus is no longer a threat to the users out there in the field. Um, 
helping to erode the user's trust in the computer. Uh, I think a lot of institutions are using computers for things that they really shouldn't be using them for when they don't know what they're, how they work, what they're capable of. Wow, we, we put our data in this thing and now the data's gone. Uh, whose fault is that but your own? Hey, it's T. Hey, Mr. T. Thanks, Major. Um, I think Mr. T may have anything to do on this one. Yeah, uh, T? No, um, I don't really have. I don't really have a lot more to throw out. I, I, those mailing list moderators have, when they publish that source code in their list, have some big brass balls to some extent because uh, I really wouldn't want a torrent of lawyers jumping on me or anything like that. That's that's vile. We should put all the lawyers in jail. <laughs> I guess this does bring up the point that lately there's been a lot of attention as far as viruses and virus writers with um, arrests and servers being seized and a lot of attention from various authorities looking into the whole virus writing subculture. And with that in mind, I'd like to first ask the audience a question and ask, ask the panelists. How many people that are here think that just writing viruses is a cool thing to do and you think that's just a neat and cool thing to do? I think that's a cool thing to do to keep Microsoft in check, did you say? Keep stupidity in check. Uh, can, can I ask a question to the guy who thinks it's keeping Microsoft in check? Do you think it's working? <laughs> Well, I think there were two different questions, though. She, she asked about writing viruses, not distributing them. So. Yes, about uh, writing viruses. About just writing viruses in general, that it's a cool thing to do, and it's really interesting, and you're really learning a lot from it. I'm just curious, who, who thinks that? Not very many people. Few people do. I'd like to ask the panel for their impressions on just writing viruses in general. I'm, I'm interested in this because I talk with a lot of virus people that write viruses. It's an interesting topic. Everybody, I mean, we have these press people here, and I want to know who writes viruses and why they do it. So if the people on the panel could just kind of say, what do you think about writing viruses? Do you think it's a cool thing to do? And also, what do you think about just putting them up there, letting them go? Start on yeah, start on this one with Mr. Attitude Adjuster. Well, um, it's it's not going to sound like the position I should be on necessarily, but this is some of me coming through and not the position. Um, yeah, I think viruses are pretty cool. And I think writing viruses is pretty cool. And I think sitting around with uh, PSMPC and chugging out new, quote, viruses or being a micro virus puppy, as Garden Sheep would say, is not cool. I think it's just a pain in the ass. Um, I think that you do not learn all about programming computers and computer science from writing viruses. That's a bunch of bullshit. Um, you learn about how to write viruses when you write viruses. Um, you can take viruses to do so many other things, though. And I know somebody out there yelled out, what's an agent? Um, an intelligent agent and a virus are not all that different, in my opinion. And making intelligent viruses that do intelligent things is where it gets really cool. Uh, a virus that calls home to mom and upgrades its own payload or, you know, viruses that are slowly penetrating a network and coming back out through the firewall or stuff like that. Uh, taking viruses to do more than just the act of a virus, which is not that complicated. Ooh, I can code self-replicating code. Yes, but make it do something cool. And that's, I think that's a real problem. There's not enough viruses doing stuff cool. As far as just writing them, yeah, I don't mind. Go ahead and write them. I have, I have a question for you. Sure. The, the programs can do things that are really cool. So if you're going to write programs to do things really cool, Cool. Why put the replication in? What's the point? What? I think the replication is kind of the hook. That's really it's like the thing. what takes it from just being, oh, this is neat, to, oh, wow, it's cool. It's spreading over this land. It's eating every PC. It's, you know. And it's getting a lot of attention to our group. It's getting the feds to take our yeah, servers. Yeah. It's getting all this thing that may not happen. The virus download and install lines. You see, I will. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Gee, why is my dial-up connection going so slow? Why did my hard drive repartition itself? Um, the one thing that I do need to qualify, and this is me coming out, I really do think that computer viruses can cross the threshold of life. Um, I really think, especially with macro viruses, just because the machine language, assembly language viruses are so brittle. You change one bit, they're broken, they're dead. But we're going to see these macro and high-level viruses running into each other, Combining, making new amalgamated life forms, and well, 
the problem's open ended. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens. We、uh, have just a couple of minutes here before something else scheduled that, that、uh, everybody's looking forward to. So I'm going to just take a couple of questions.、Uh, I think we've heard from our virus writer. I'll take a question from this guy over here in the yellow circle on his shirt. Is he a fed? Are you a fed? No. Okay. <laughs> Why does the conservative side of the antivirus and security industry insist on confusing prosecution with prevention? With prevention?、Uh, John, you want to take that one? Basically, it's thirty seconds. It's the only, first off is the only tool they have. Second off, they're not the ones doing it. They want it stopped. They go to their lawyers. Their lawyers go to the authorities. That's all the authorities have to do. Next question. Sunglasses. Up here. But, uh, uh, do you want to answer that? I just, I just think, I just want to say, I think the nature of a lot of the public using computers today is they want to be sheep, and that maybe the industry isn't forcing them that way. But gosh, it's so easy to be a sheep. Also,、uh, another point is、uh, with Melissa, for example,、uh, it was so widely distributed over the news that it actually、uh, helped to educate people on viruses. So the wide distribution of that information in the end ended up helping people, even though it was so、uh, well, it wasn't really damaging, but it got so distributed. It, it, I, I found your logic a little bit strange, actually. I'd, I'd like to make an analogy.、Um, given that we cannot catch all murderers, does that mean we shouldn't try and suppress murder? You know, because we're just giving a hard time to the guys who are stupid and get murdered. Well, for the sheep factor,、uh, to combat a virus, you don't need to、uh, know how a virus is written. Those are entirely different things. Writing a virus and defeating it—it's like building a house and knocking it down.、Uh, we're going to stop now. If anybody has questions for any of us, we'll be around this、uh, this dem next demonstration, and, and we'll be happy to answer questions. Sorry, I couldn't get to all of you. Thank you very much for coming. Bye. Actually,、uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if I get your attention, if these guys could be kind enough, maybe to be in the main convention hall or outside by the pool to answer questions for you, we've actually got to ask all of you. And I know this is going to be tough. You have to buy beer. You have to buy beer, not Corona. And those are out, please. We actually need to clear the auditorium for about 15 minutes for the CDC presentation.